Hello and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. I'm your host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting July 2, 2012. So what does Uyghur, China, the Dalai Lama, and Macintosh computers have in common? Well, this week, a new advanced piece of malware. During the week, Kaspersky found another variant of the Mac control malware. This is a backdoor that infects Macintosh computers. They discovered some spear phishing emails specifically targeting the Uyghur people. This is a Turkic ethnic group that lives in China. Uh, these emails contained a zip attachment, and compressed within that was both the image file and an OS X application. Now, if you ran the OS X application on a PowerPC or Intel Mac, uh, you'd be infected by the Mac control backdoor Trojan, which then would connect back to a command and control server and have access to all your files. Another note of interest is the command and control server was located in China. So a very specific targeted attack going after Mac computers. Now, no one can unequivocally Equivocally say this attack comes from China. Uh, but another story of interest lately is the fact that the Dalai Lama uses a Macintosh computer. And often we see a lot of Chinese based attacks seeming to target uh, the Dalai Lama and Tibetan people. Uh, so it's very interesting to see these type of Chinese based attacks going after Mac computers. On a side note, do know that Alienware, another uh, AV company, did also notice another variant of this threat that also targets Windows PCs as well. As an aside, there's another spam going around right now that's talking about the Dalai Lama's birthday, which I believe is on July 6th. This spam also contains malware as well. So if you get any emails like this, be sure not to click on any of their links or attachments. And of course, keep your antivirus products, including our WatchGuard XTM and XCS devices up to date. Next, let's talk about three mobile malware stories, mostly focusing on the Android platform. Early in the week, a researcher released information about a new Android clickjacking rootkit. Basically, these researchers found a way to install a rootkit on an Android device without the Android device needing to be rooted and also without rebooting the device. If they can get you to install a booby-trapped application and accept certain privileges, their rootkit will actually gain more privileges than you actually think you're accepting. Uh, there's a video demonstration of this particular rootkit where uh, the author uses it to show how he can hide uh, icons on your, your Android desktop which is a great way to hide malware he might install on your Android device. On top of that, there is also news this week about an Android botnet. Uh, in a Microsoft blog post, they talked about seeing spam coming from the Yahoo mail servers. But what was interesting about this spam is while it was very normal Viagra-related spam, if they actually looked at the message ID, they saw the spam was tagged with the Android mobile message ID header. On top of that, the end of the spam included a, a little message saying this email was sent with Yahoo mail on an Android device. This means that there is a botnet out there that's actually using infected Android devices to send spam out to the world. Now, none of the security researchers looking into this have said how these Android devices got infected with this bot Trojan. However, Microsoft did notice that a lot of these messages seem to be coming from Android devices in China, the Middle East, and Asia. And they suspect that it's probably coming from some unsanctioned Android marketplace, probably one of those unofficial marketplaces where they say you can download a free version of Angry Birds, which is probably pirated, by the way. But the whole point is to get you to download a backdoored app and install this bot client on your folder. So if there's anything you can learn from this, it's to probably avoid installing Android or any mobile software from unofficial sources. Or if you have to, be very, very careful doing so. The final mobile related story has to do with a Trojan actually making it on both Google's official Play Marketplace and Apple's iOS App Store. 
Later in the week, Kaspersky found a Russian application called Find and Call. If you install this application either from Google Play or the Apple App Store, uh, when you're first using it, it asks you to register your cell phone number and your email, and it asks you if you want to help find your friends. But when you do this, it actually quietly uploads your contact list or address book to these people's third-party servers. It then uses the numbers and addresses it finds in that address book to send SMS messages that appear to come from your phone to all your friends with a link pointing to this find and call application. While you might argue whether or not this is really malware or just a legitimate application that's using very, very aggressive marketing, in either case, most researchers consider this sort of uh, action at least a privacy violation and are considering it actual malware. Furthermore, right after this story came out, Apple did remove the find and call malware from their app store, although it still may be on Google Play. In any case, if you're one of the people that have installed find and call, I'd definitely delete it. Next up is a security story with some privacy implications. During the week, uh, owners of Cisco's Linksys routers, who actually had a feature called automatic firmware updates uh, enabled, all got a forced firmware update that caused their routers to start being managed by Cisco's Cloud Connect management software. This means they had very limited access to configuring their router locally and instead had to use Cisco's cloud service to configure their router. And it also means Cisco may have some of their router configuration data in that cloud. Furthermore, when this firmware came down, Cisco also had some privacy agreement or privacy policy updates, which talked about how they could track your internet usage if you're using their routers. This, of course, did upset a big portion of Cisco's Linksys router customers. But the good news is Cisco rolled back this uh, firmware later in the week, thus removing it. Now, personally, I don't think there's too much wrong with uh, allowing some sort of cloud-based application for your management. There's a lot of benefits for some businesses to use cloud-based management. But the key here is it should be customer choice. Customers need to know that the cloud provider they go with has their security and best interest in mind. So forcing them to use the cloud service probably won't leave them with a good impression. In the future, let's hope that anyone offering these kind of cloud services makes sure to opt in their customers before forcing them to use it. Let's finish this episode with a quick update to the DNS changer story. If you've watched the podcast over the past few months, you know all about the DNS changer malware. This is a very, very widespread piece of malware that infected tons of computers over the last few years. However, a while ago, the law enforcement actually took down this malicious network, and they actually took over the DNS servers the malware was using to redirect you to bad sites. However, the catch is on July 9th, which is next Monday, uh, the FBI plans to take down these servers, and they've been warning about this for months and months. The key thing is, there's still about half a million people infected with DNS Changer. When these servers go offline, those computers will seem like they're offline as well. So if you haven't already checked your computer for DNS Changer, be sure to do so before Monday, otherwise you may lose your internet connection. And of course, I'll actually put a link in the actual podcast post that points to where you can check for DNS Changer malware. So you can now call yourself informed. That covers yet another week of security news. I hope you found it helpful and interesting. As usual, if you'd like more regular updates, be sure to follow the WatchGuard Security Center blog. And feel free to check out my tweets. I go by at SecAdept. Thanks for watching. And here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.